Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with an LED light install video. In this video, I'm going to show you the bolt style LEDs that can be adapted to most of our grills. We're going to be using a third gen 4Runner for the demo grill. And I'm going to use the mesh piece that we sell on a pre-modified grill frame and show different techniques such as a punch, a coping saw blade, as well as some wire cutters. Let's take a look at the LEDs real quick. For this install, I want to showcase the three colors we currently stock. So in this bag, I have one amber light, along with a cool white and a natural white version. And onto the tools, I have a pair of the Klein D2755 cutting pliers, but other brands or styles can be used. The coping saw that I'm going to use is a six and a half inch long and 24 teeth per inch blade. And lastly, the hand-operated punch will be ready to use after I swap in the 7 16 inch circle tooling. Let's get to work by first doing a test fit of the mesh piece on the grill. In this case, the mesh goes on the back of the grill frame. And then once we have that slipped on, then let's flip it back around and find the center of the grill. Sometimes there can be a tab, which is the center point, but you don't always want to trust that without double checking. And it's a good thing I did check this because the center is ever so slightly offset to the left of what some may mistake to be the center tab. To mark the center, I'll spin off one of the nuts from the LED bolts and place it along the center line that I just measured. I wanna put these lights near the top of the mesh, but I also wanna space it away from the grill frame a small amount. We're doing a three light setup and given the area that I have to work with, I think somewhere around six to eight inches of spacing of the lights will look good. I'm gonna split the difference and put another nut on the same horizontal plane as the center one and drop it at seven inches away. Repeat for the other side and make any fine adjustments to ensure that these are evenly spaced and straight across. Double check your work and then let's grab a silver marker. While holding the nut in place with one hand, use the silver marker in your other hand to mark and fill in the center of the nut. Repeat for the other side and then remove the nuts. Let's take a closer look at our work by removing the mesh from the grill frame. These look pretty good. There's a nice full circle where the center of the nut was. Now let's try out some of these different techniques for cutting the mesh out, starting with the wire cutter method first. This is a good tool for some of our meshes such as the Perf SS, the Perf Hex, and most of the expanded diamond meshes. I would avoid using this setup for anything that's stainless steel or anything that's more heavy duty than what I'm showing here. Since we couldn't get the marker all the way to the inside edge of the nut, we're going to need to make this cut a little bit larger than what was marked. The ideal radius for these is 7 16 of an inch if you want to measure that out. After a preliminary cut, let's do a quick test fit with one of these lights. And well, this seems to be a little too tight. So let's trim back a little bit more of the material and try again. It looked like the top area was being more problematic than the lower cuts, so I'll focus on that. Of course, you don't want to cut too much off because then the light will just fall right through the hole. These lights have a relatively tight tolerance that you need to get them within for a proper fit. Let's see how this slightly wider opening works, and it looks like I can get it in there with no problem. Next up is a coping saw blade attempt. These are good for really tight spots as well as thicker materials that can't be cut through with wire cutters. The trade-off with this method is that it's hard to get started, very uncomfortable to use, and very tedious. Honestly, I would only suggest this method if you have no other reasonable options. Also, this method isn't really easy to make a second cut on, like with the wire cutters. It's most definitely a measure twice and cut once type of thing to attempt. I later tested this one and the bolt barely passed through. If your light is stuck, the best way to refine the hole size is to use a file. For the last cutout, I'll use this hand punch pre-installed with the 7 16 inch tooling. Just line up the center of the punch with the center of the silver marker hole. Then it's just a matter of applying enough pressure to perforate the mesh with the tool. This does require a little bit of grip strength, but the mechanical advantage of the tool should be enough for most materials. I tested this hole as well, and the LED was a perfect fit. One small issue with cutting all of these holes is that the inside of the cuts is going to leave a bare metal exposed. 
This mesh, as well as most of our meshes, is aluminum, so it's not going to rust, but I don't want the powder coat to start flaking off in these areas. Spraying the mesh with a fresh coat of flat black would work, but for many other colors, that's probably not a viable option. A technique that will work well in almost all applications would be to use an oil-based paint pen. These work great for sealing off exposed metal, and I'll make a couple passes over the edge before moving on. Just be sure to not get any of this on the front of the mesh. Now the mesh can be mounted and we can start to feed the lights in and fasten them down. Normally we'd be putting three of the same color in, but I want to show everyone watching this video the different colors that we have to offer. The amber will be in the center with the cool white on the left and the natural white on the right. Next up, feed the wires through the center of the nut and start fastening the bolts to the mesh. You'll want to get these relatively tight and possibly use a pair of pliers or a wrench to do the final tightening. Once tightened, consider using some thread locker or a small dab of adhesive on the back of the bolt near the nut so that it doesn't accidentally come off later down the road. And now, you might notice a somewhat obvious issue with the wire links. I can only get two of the three wires to touch, and I want to put all of them on the same power source. So, I'll now need to grab some additional wire to extend the wire connections to be long enough so that we can group them together. Split the new wire so we have some room to work with, and strip off a little bit more than a quarter inch from the end so that we have exposed wires. I like to twist the end so that when we go to use a connector, we have a nice smooth entry. The connectors that I'm going to use are some butt connectors that have a heat shrink covering on them. Slide the connector onto the exposed wire and then crimp the metal on that end. Repeat on the other side and then let's move back over to the light and connect it up on the ends there. Obviously we're going to connect up the black wire extension to the black wire on the light and connect the red wire extension to the red wire on the light. While the crimped connection is generally going to be pretty solid, let's go ahead and finish this step by activating the heat shrink. I'm going to use a small butane torch here, but a good heat gun is probably a better tool to use for the job. The wires are now sealed and it's time to combine all of the wires. I like using a little wire block that you can find online, which is designed for just this type of thing. On the end with three connections, I'll open those up and feed one red wire per hole and then close the connections. Then let's repeat that for the black wires on the second wire block. Then we can take the wires from the power source and connect them up to the appropriately colored blocks. In this close up, you can see all the connections for both the red and the black sides are closed off. At this point, you'll want to figure out a good plan for how to hide the wire blocks on or in or around the grill. Once you've found a good spot, secure them in place. Ideally, using some screws will likely get the best results, but I don't want to screw into the grill that I just built. So, for this build, I'll use a couple dabs of some quick drying epoxy. This will hold great, but could be hard to service if needed. Depending on how you're planning to power these, you may want to consider some other components. I'm going to hook this one up to the battery, and because of that, I also want to put a fuse on the connection as well as a toggle switch. The draw from these lights is very minimal, so a low amp fuse is all you would realistically need. In short, follow some basic common knowledge guidelines on electrical wiring when hooking these up and these should be no problem. This step can vary from vehicle to vehicle, and there's plenty of other great videos, books, and websites out there on the subject which explore methods like this more in depth. Okay, I think I'm good to go now. Let's flip the switch and see how these look. Well, 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 this is looking pretty good. Keep in mind, this is the view with the full studio lights going. These are impressively bright given their size, but let's dim the studio lights right now and see how they look with just the shop lights on. Okay, now we're talking. These are noticeably darker, but what I'm wondering now is what do they look like with the shop lights off? <sighs> okay, okay, holy smokes, these are bright given their size. This is a super impressive light show, but let's turn the shop lights back on. Obviously, I'll swap these out to be an all amber or all white setup after the video, but I wanted to show everyone how the different colors look in comparison to each other. The cool white appears brighter in camera, but the natural white on the right is just as bright in person, and both whites are much brighter than the amber. Here's a couple of pics of how they look after the installation. This customer opted for the three amber light setup and the daytime pick looks pretty good, 
but check out this nighttime picture. Keep in mind that his shop lights are still on. Overall, these are a cost-effective way to further personalize your grill and your vehicle. I love doing these types of add-ons, so this was a fun video to put together, and that's all I have for this one. I hope you liked it. Feel free to subscribe, and if you have any questions, then drop them down below. And thanks for watching.